Hello guys. In this video, we will see how decision tree learns to classify the given data set into two or more classes. Specifically, we will learn what do we mean by ID3 algorithm and how it works. Okay, so let's get started. So ID3 algorithm basically makes use of two things. One is entropy and other thing is information gain. Information gain is actually dependent on entropy. Okay, so first of all, let us understand what is entropy and how we can calculate it. Okay, so entropy. Entropy can be understood as a measure of purity or impurity. Mathematically, it is denoted as H of, let's say we have data set with us. Let's call it as D. H of D is equal to, so it will be summation of I is equal to 1 to C P I into log 2 P I. Okay. So what is this C? C number of classes. Okay. So if we have two classes in our given data set or in other words, if we want to divide the data set into two classes, 1 or 0, C will be 2 in case of binary classification. If we want to classify the data set into three classes, C will be 3. Okay. So it is number of classes. Okay. P I so probability, right? So P stands for probability. Probability of class I in given data set D. Okay, so D is our data set. So this is the formula. Okay. So in order to understand this formula in a better way, let's say we are dealing with a binary classification problem. Okay. Binary classification where we will have two classes. Okay. So, let us take some example of classifying the finance data into fraudulent and non-fraudulent. Okay. So, let us say we have our financial data with us and we have to classify this into two classes, whether the transaction is fraudulent or non-fraudulent. Okay. So, in short, let us uh, denote fraudulent as F and non-fraudulent as NF. Right. So, if we have some around 10 records with us, let us say we have 10 records in our data set. Okay. And out of 10 records, let us say we have 7 non-fraudulent records and 3 fraudulent records. Okay. So, in this case, how can we calculate the entropy? So, let me just write that formula here again. So, it is H of D is equal to I is equal to 1 to C minus P I log to the base 2 of P I. Correct. So, let us calculate the entropy for this particular data set. Let us call this as data set D1 for now. Okay. Entropy for this particular data set, we will calculate it. So, if I expand this with respect to this particular data set, it will be i is equal to 1 to 2 p i minus p i log to p i right so this will be minus p fraudulent log to probability of fraudulent minus probability of non fraudulent into log 2 of probability of non fraudulent okay so now we will plug in the values here so i told you we have total 10 records with us in the data set d1 so, what is the probability of fraudulent? It will be 3 by 10 into log 2 of 3 by 10. Correct. Similarly, what is the probability of non fraudulent? It will be 7 by 10. Correct. 7 by 10 log 2 of 7 by 10. Okay. So, now uh, let me just check what values it, it gives me. I have already calculated it here. I will just write them down. Okay. So, it will be 0 0.5211 plus 0 0.3608. So, if you add this, we will get the entropy as 0 0.8813. So, this is our entropy for the data set D1. Okay. Now, let us say we have another data set. Uh, let us say it as D2. Okay. And in this data set also, let us say we have 10 records. Okay. Out of 10 records, let us say 
5 are fraudulent and 5 are non fraudulent so we have equal split in the data set among the two classes so in this case what will be the entropy so i'll just plug in the values in this formula right so i'll just write the formula again entropy of d2 data set is minus probability of fraudulent log 2 of probability of fraudulent minus probability of non fraudulent multiplied by log to the base 2 of non fraudulent non fraudulent probability so what is the probability of fraudulent it's 5 by 10 because we have five fraudulent records multiplied by log 2 5 by 10 of course this is negative minus again this will also be the same value because non fraudulent also we have five records so minus 5 by 10 log 2 of 5 by 10 correct so if you solve this we will get the final value as 0.5 plus 0.5 is equal to 1 d2 okay so similarly if we have another data set so let's call it as d3 and let's say we have 10 records okay and out of 10 records all 10 belongs to non fraudulent none of the records in this d3 data set are of fraud so in this case what will be the entropy for this d3 data set it will be if i just plug in the values in this formula it will be so how many fraudulent we have no right so it will be zero so this part will be zero in this case minus probability of non fraudulent so it is 10 by 10 into log 2 of 10 by 10 right so this if you work it out it will be zero so the entropy of this particular data set d3 is zero so what you can conclude in this is if we have a mixture of both the classes in the data set we will have the entropy value greater than zero if we have all the records belonging to only one class the entropy will be zero okay so this you have to remember so hopefully you have understood how to calculate the entropy and what the values represented here okay so we have seen till now we have considered only binary classification example right so how this works out if we have more than two classes let's say we have to classify the given data set into three classes so if i could think of an example here let me take example of cancers cancer classification okay cancer classification wherein we will need to classify the tumor into three stages stage 1 cancer stage 2 cancer and stage 3 cancer so how this formula will uh, roll out here now entropy of this particular data set cancer classification data set will be computed as again the formula will remain same now we have three classes right so i equal to 1 2 3 1 2 3 pi log of pi correct so p is for probability right so if i just expand it so it will be minus p probability of stage 1 multiplied with log 2 of probability of stage 1 minus probability of stage 2 multiplied with log 2 log base 2 of the probability of stage 2 and minus probability of stage 3 multiplied by log to the base 2 of probability of stage 3 right so it goes on expanding itself based on the number of classes that we have okay so this is how we will calculate the entropy now one please uh, concentrate here one important thing so if i just plot the entropy for binary classification okay so let us consider the fraud data set that we had okay so let me have the probability of fraudulent data on the x axis and on the y axis let's have the entropy of the data set so if we plot it and it will be 0 it will be 1 the entropy will be 0 and it will be 1 so if i plot this this will look somewhat like this okay so this peak here it will be 1 so i'll just adjust to that so this particular peak of this curve will be 
1.0 that's the entropy so what this represents so let me just tell you so since the probability of fraudulent is zero at this particular point so we will have all the data points belonging to non fraudulent classes okay so now here we have 0.5 we will be having 0.5 here so the probability of fraudulent is 50% this is the probability of fraudulent data, uh, data being fraudulent being 50% so at this particular point we will have equal split between non fraudulent and fraudulent data points and at this particular point we will have all the data points belonging to fraudulent classes okay so in case of binary classification in case of binary classification entropy ranges from 0 to 1 it cannot go less than 0 or it cannot go greater than 1 only in case of binary classification okay in case of multi class classification multi class classification the max value of the entropy can be greater than 1 so max value of entropy can be greater than 1 can be i am not saying it must be it can be greater than 1 but min value it will be zero min value is always zero so the range of the entropy function when we are dealing with multi class classification it will be minimum value is zero and it can range anything more than zero and there is no limit upper limit for that so it can be greater than one also but in case of binary classification max value the entropy function can get is one and min value the entropy function can get is zero okay so this one you have to remember then now let's take an example of data set okay and then we will understand how decision tree works now that you have understood entropy okay i will take an example of data set with the help of that data set i will compute the entropy and also i will make you understand what do we mean by information gain okay so let me just copy the data set here so just bear with me copy so we have this data set here this is a classical data set you can get it from google so most of the people will use the same data set in order to explain the classification problem may it be bayesian classification or id3 algorithm like decision tree okay so let us see how we will come to the conclusion or how we will train the decision tree algorithm using this particular data set okay so before we actually jump in we need to understand what do we mean by information gain okay let so just let me write that down information gain so for short in short i will represent it as ig okay so this can be written as ig is equal to entropy of the parent node okay minus weighted average multiplied by entropy of children okay so this is the formula to calculate the information gain so why we need this i'll tell you in a while while i'm explaining decision tree algorithm with this particular data set okay so now if you look at this particular example we have something called as parent right so this particular parent is nothing but data before split data before split okay and this holds good at all the levels of a tree okay so now let us calculate the entropy for this particular data set now this is our parent so entropy of the parent the entire data set is calculated as so in this data set our target variable is played football yes or no 
so it's a binary classification problem okay binary classification so total we have 14 records okay out of 14 records yes i think it is 14 uh, out of 14 i think it is 9 and no it is 5 right so 1 2 3 4 5 5 no's and 9 yeses so it's a binary classification problem okay so now in order to compute the entropy for this data set i'll just write that formula again i is equal to 1 to 2 we have two classes right so minus pi log to the base 2 of pi okay so if i expand it minus probability of s log 2 to the probability of s minus probability of no multiplied by log 2 to the probability of no okay so using this we will using this data set we will plug in the values for this okay so now if i compute the prob for this we have total 9 s's right so it probability of s will be 9 by 14 minus 9 by 14 log 2 of 9 by 14 and probability of no will be 5 by 14 correct 5 by 14 log 2 of 5 by 14 so if you work this out i have the calculations here so this will come to be 0 0.9403 so this is the entropy of our parent data set so this okay now as i told you in my first video on decision tree we will split the data selecting the features right so in this case we have one two three four four features correct so first feature is outlook so let's try to split this particular data using the first feature that is outlook okay so if i just write that so i'll just write it here i am now splitting the data at feature outlook okay so this outlook has how many values sunny overcast and rain so let me just write that down so this outlook has three unique data one is sunny overcast and rain okay so these are the three different values this particular column takes now when the outlook is sunny how many s and how many no's are there we have to list that up so when the outlook is sunny we have two no's here third no one s two s right so three no's and two s's correct so we'll write yes yes and we have three no's correct so let's just quickly match that we have total one two three four five records where the outlook is sunny and out of these five records we have three nodes and two s's so similarly for the overcast how many records we have for overcast one two three four four records and out of these four records how many are s and how many are no that we have to compute so overcast this is s overcast this is s overcast this is s overcast this is s so for all the overcast records the target variable is s so i will just write four s s here yes 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 and yes so similarly for rain as outlook how many records we have we will check it first one two three four five five records we have where the outlook is raining and out of those five records how many are s yes and how many are no for the target variable we have to compute that okay so let us compute that so these three here are our rain outlook two are s one is no this one is s so three are s one is no three s two no's we have three s and two no's when the outlook is raining yes yes Yes, no, no. 
two nos and three s's. So let's just verify one no, two no, and remaining are yes. Okay. So now we have our split at this particular feature outlook. So now what we will do? We have the parent entropy. Now we have to compute the entropy for this particular child: sunny, overcast, and rain. Okay. Now we will calculate those respective entropies. So let me say entropy for data set where we have used sunny. So this will be probability of s multiplied with log to the base two of probability of s minus probability of no multiplied with log to the base two of probability of no. Right. So for this particular sunny outlook. How many records are there? We have five records. So total records is five. S yes is two. No is three. So we will plug in these values here. Probability of S for this sunny is how many S we have? Two out of five records. So it will be minus two by five log to the base two of two by five. Okay. And for no, it will be three by five. Log to the base two of three by five. Okay, so if you work this out, you will get the entropy as zero point nine seven one. Okay, so this is the entropy for data set at sunny. So similarly, we need to calculate the entropy for overcast. So this will be any guesses. We have all s here. So entropy is zero. Correct. So I had told you earlier, right? So while I was explaining with some simple example, so if we have a data set where all the records belongs to the same class, that entropy will be zero, correct? So here I can directly write it as zero. Okay. Now we will calculate the entropy for this particular subset of data where we are looking at rain as a feature. Okay. So this will be again probability of s. Log to the base two probability of s. The formula remains same. There is no change, right? Why there is no change? Because we are dealing with the same target variable, so it will remain same. So this, how many s's are there? Three. So minus three by five. How many total records? Five. Correct. Log base two of three by five minus how many nos are there? Two. Probability is two by five because we have five records in total. Log two of Two by five, so this is same as this. So I can directly write the entropy for this particular sub data set. So now I have calculated the children entropies. So these are all my child entropies. Child entropies, and this is my parent entropy. Okay. Now, using this, we will compute our information gain. So, what is the formula for information gain? It is this particular thing. Let me just copy this. Okay. So now, what is the parent entropy? It's point nine four zero three. Correct. So I'll just plug in the values here. So information gain. Information gain is equal to parent entropy that is point nine four zero three correct zero point nine four zero three. Now we will see how we can compute this weighted average and multiply that with the children entropy. So coming to this particular computation now. So just remember one thing: this weighted average is among the entire data set. That we have before the split. That is, we have total fourteen records, right? So, for Sunny, how many we have? We have five records. How many records we have? We have five records. So the weight will be five out of fourteen multiplied by that particular entropy, zero point nine seven one plus. This entropy is anyway zero, so it will be zero. We don't have to worry about that. Plus, how many we have for rain? We have five, right? So it will be again five by fourteen. 
so five sorry five by fourteen into zero point nine seven one the entropy for rainy so that's our child now right nine seven one so if you calculate this the information gain will come to be around zero point two four six eight okay this will be our information gain so now what we have done we have considered to split the data by taking outlook as a feature now we will repeat this step for all the features we will consider temperature and also we will consider humidity we will also consider wind so if you if you work out for temperature the information gain uh, let me just write so splitting at temperature okay splitting at temperature the information gain will come around 0 0.0299 right so just to suffix it and for the understanding information gain when we split the data set at outlook feature okay so let me just write it as information gain at outlook is 0 0.2468 information gain for the split at temperature it is 0 0.0299 similarly we will calculate the information gain for the other feature which are those humidity and wind right so information gain for the split at humidity and information gain for the split at wind okay so let me just uh, write these values i have the, them computed here so okay so it comes to be for humidity it is 0 0.152 for wind it will be 0 0.048 right so now we have calculated the information gain considering the splits at all of these features that we have with us so how do we decide at which feature we will split the data set so it will be the feature which gives us the highest information gain okay so we will select the feature select the feature which gives us highest information gain so out of this which is giving us the highest information gain this particular thing here right the outlook so what we will do we will split the data set at outlook okay so if i split the data set at outlook this is how it looks like okay fine so now we will have our data sets split and once we have this whatever follows below sunny overcast and rain are called as subtrees or you can call them as branches so let me just write it branches or you can call it as subtrees okay now one important thing to understand here so the entropy at overcast condition is zero right so we will not split this particular sub branch here so whatever we have here right so overcast all are s so if the outlook is overcast we are sure to play so at this particular point we will not split further will not split further and this particular node is called as leaf node why because it is not having any children below it why it is not having any children below it because we are not splitting it why we are not splitting there is nothing left to split we have achieved our goal of classifying that particular thing correctly so if a new data set comes in okay if the outlook is overcast we can directly say that this data set belongs to the class s we will we need not look into other feature set at all okay so that's why we will stop splitting at this particular thing now below sunny and rain we have our 
few data sets. So five data points below sunny and five data points below rain. So how do we proceed further? So now we have split at outlook. We need to consider temperature, humidity and wind again to further split these records. Okay. So how do we decide at which particular feature we have to split? Again, we will follow the same steps. We will calculate the entropy for the data set that is under outlook sunny. So this will be our parent entropy. Okay. And whatever parameter that we select, whatever feature that we select. So let's say we select temperature and this will have multiple values, right? So temperature takes hot, mild and cold values. So hot, mild and cold, hot, mild and cold. So we will calculate the entropy for the data set where all the entries are sunny for outlook and this hot, mild and cold, these will be our child entropies. Okay, child entropies and we will again compute the information gain considering the split at temperature. We will do the same thing information gain considering the split at humidity and wind. Okay, information gain at humidity, information gain considering the split at wind. So again, which one we will choose? Whichever gives us the highest information gain. Okay, so we will continue this un until we occur at leaf node. Okay, so we will continue doing this. So this is the general ID3 algorithm. And this is what decision tree classifier uses. Okay, there is another thing called as genie impurity. I will talk about this in my next video. Okay, so this is how ID3 algorithm works and decision tree classifier works using ID3 algorithm. Okay, if it uses entropy and information gain, we call it as using ID3 algorithm. If it uses genie impurity, we will just call it as genie impurity decision tree classifier. So now there are multiple criteria in order to stop this particular recursive behavior. Okay, so in order to summarize how this decision tree classifier works, so summary decision tree classifier using ID3 algorithm. So what we do? We have our data set anyway at our hand. We will select the first feature to split. How do we select it? Based on entropy and info gain. Okay. And then if any subtree or branch has zero entropy, do not touch that branch further. For other branches, for other branches where entropy is greater than zero, again do the step or you can write repeat recursively what we have to repeat select the next set of features to split select next set of feature to split and again how do you select it again based on the same thing entropy and information gain okay so this repeats unless we reach the leaf node Okay, so there are certain parameters uh, which we need to specify while we are training the decision tree classifier model. So I will cover that in my another video where I will be explaining the scikit learn decision tree algorithm. Okay, so finally, with this particular example, how the tree looks like? So it will be so the first feature is outlook. So we have worked out why we are choosing outlook based on the highest information gain. Right. So based on outlook, sunny, overcast and rain. So this is our first split. 
so similarly if you work it out next we will select humidity here okay and once we have selected humidity here the thing remaining is wind and temperature here we will select wind okay so then if humidity is high humidity is normal if humidity is high will not play if it is normal will play okay so this overcast it's always s so there is no need to split it again so if wind is strong and wind is weak so we have to split based on this so if wind is strong we will not play if wind is weak we will play so this is the final decision tree that we get for our data set that we have considered here so this particular data set here so if you take a look at this decision tree temperature is not playing any part here okay so we can do away with temperature without temperature feature also we are able to classify the given data set perfectly okay without any issues so in this tree this one is called as root node so do not get confused with the actual tree usually root will be at the bottom but in a decision tree the root will be at the top okay and these things here humidity wind these are our decision nodes okay and this is our leaf node so are these things all these are our leaf nodes okay and this particular thing this part here this part here is called as a branch or subtree okay so as this particular part so this is also called as branch or subtree okay branch or subtree so hope you learned id3 algorithm and how decision tree uses id3 algorithm for classification purpose so this decision tree can also be used for regression purposes and i will also need to talk about how decision trees are used when we have numerical values okay so here in this case there are all categorical values right so how decision tree will work in case of we have numerical values and how we can apply decision tree for regression i'll cover it in my another video okay so that's it for this video guys hope this is in depth and uh, you should not have any doubts if you have please post it in comment section okay so if you like the content please give it a thumbs up share it among your peers and if you have not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye